So I'm pretty blown away by the response to the Leonardo AI video that I just posted. And today we're going to look at training data sets in Leonardo AI. Before I show you the actual process, I encourage you to head over to the FAQ section here. You'll see an article about fine tuning. When you click on getting started, read through this document. It doesn't take very long. The one thing I want to point out here in part two is what makes a good training run. As it states here, a good sweet spot is around eight to 15 images, depending what it is you're training. You see, there's a minimum of five images and a max of 30. Now, if you're training something like this, basically it doesn't require as many images, but if you're training a certain style, you may want to use 20 to 30 images. It'll probably take some tweaking and fine tuning to really dial in your model. This was trained at 512 by 512 aspect ratio. If I click on edit data set here, you see that we have variants of images of April at 512 by 512. But I want to start from scratch so that I can show you how it's done. And it's relatively easy. The very first thing you want to do is set up your images. You can use any program that you're comfortable with, but if you want something free and easy, I highly encourage you to check out Canva. Just go to canva.com, come up to the top here. Once you create an account, click on create a design, go to custom size right here and you can enter your specs here. Today I'm going to use 768 by 768. Once you create the workspace, you just simply have to go to the left here to uploads, click on upload files and upload your images. And you simply just drag your image into the workspace here and set your composition. And then once you're done, you can click on the share button here, download, leave it at a PNG format, and then click download and it's gonna save to your default downloads folder. Then once you have your images set up, click on new data set. Give your data set a name. I'm just going to call this Riza Rev 1. You can also put a description here. I'll leave mine blank for now. And then all you have to do is create data set. Click on that. Then you can either click on here to import your images or simply drag and drop them, which I'm going to do right now and you'll see that they'll be uploaded. And then we have, I think I have 15 or 16 images and it's as easy as that. Click on train model. So if you look here, you see it says advanced training settings. It's not available yet because they haven't launched it. And all that's available here is 512 by 512 or 768 by 768, which I'm going to select category. I'll pick photography. Now, if your model is NSFW, there is an option here you can check on. So for this model, I'm going to train using Stable Diffusion 2.1. The instance prompt here is your trigger word that when you enter it into the prompt, it's going to look like your model. For simplicity's sake, I'm used to using SKS Woman. So that's what I'm going to enter. And I just adopted that from using like Photo Booth or Astria. It works well for me, so I kind of stick to that. Then all you have to do is click on start training. Now it says here you'll get an email when it's completed. If we click on view status, you'll see all your training information here. This model is already trained, which I'm going to show you in a second. All right, so let's talk about how to use your trained model. In your prompt, whatever your instance prompt word was, you have to put it somewhere in your prompt. I don't think it matters where I typically put it close to the beginning. In this example, I put it after beautiful SKS woman warrior wearing Skyrim dragon scale armor. As always, I'll leave these prompts in the description below, but obviously I'm using my own model here. And you'll notice under the negative prompt sections here, it does state your instance prompt here, SKS woman. Make sure that when you select your model that you are choosing your specific model. Now, if you don't see it, just go to select custom model. By default, you might be on the platform models. You won't find it there. Just head over to your models and you'll see all your models listed here. Just hover over your model, click on view and then select generate with this model. For now, I'm going to leave this at none. We'll leave negative prompts on. Even the prompt magic will turn off and then we'll compare it afterwards. 
We're going to leave all the default settings here because I'm pretty happy with using them. Then we'll generate four images. Next, I'm going to adjust the dimensions to more of a portrait style photo. And then I'm going to run those images as well. Not too bad. I mean, the eyes are a little janky and so is the lips here. We can fix that in post. Not a big deal. I wonder if my steps are a little too high. It seems a little too contrasty. So I'm going to run them again. Actually, let's take a look at these ones. Yeah, these ones turned out pretty good too. Probably much better. So the eyes aren't coming through all too much. And that's why I feel like I'm missing something. But the hands, yeah, the hands are looking pretty good. Now, whenever there's weapons, they don't really grab the weapons properly. I find that's a general weakness with image generation. But for the most part, it's picking up the armor. It's picking up the prompt exactly the way I want it. I'm actually going to decrease the steps to 30. For people, I like to use DPM. So let's try DPM, generate another four, and let's try DDIM. DDIM is another one I like to use, and it typically generates pretty quickly. So if we look at the images here. Yeah, they're a little better at 30 steps, not as contrasty and aggressive, but I notice the hands are not perfect but they're not too janky like I can fix these in Photoshop for example really nice really nice this one turned out pretty decent yeah not bad results next what I'd like to try is put the prompt magic on and the Leonardo style that may help with the eyes and the faces I don't know let's find out so let's generate another four so yeah, it gave it their Leonardo style. Really love the bouquet in the background. That looks really good. So there's still a bit of distortion in the face, but definitely workable. But I really like how this one turned out. Again, eyes are fixable. So here's some other renders I used with April's model. This one looks really nice. I just find the red here is a little too saturated. But I love the look of it. This one too, really nice. In these ones, I was trying to do like a mythical queen type of look, which again looks really good. So in short, I would say that it's great that we can have the ability to train our own models. But I feel like I'm missing something because the quality that I got from the same images using Photo Booth developed more photorealistic images using it locally. Maybe I still got to dial in the images, try different ones. I'm going to mess around with it still and maybe get some advice from them. And by the way, the folks at Leonardo AI were nice enough to comment on my last video, clarifying some things on outpainting, the unzoom feature, and a couple other things. Make sure to check it out in one of these spots. And until the next video, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.